My name is John King. Today, I'm going to be talking about banana republics. Oh. Okay, so what is banana republic? Some of you may be thinking high quality fashion at an affordable price. Um, that is actually not what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about certain Central and South American countries whose economies were based on um, obtaining an influx of foreign capital. Now, what this looked like, uh, especially in these Central American uh, countries was exporting fruit. Um, during the 1800s and 1900s, that was the backbone of their economy. Bananas, sugar, pineapple. But what Americans love more than anything else is bananas. They love bananas. Um, it, now, major player here is the United Fruit Company. Uh, this is an American company that uh, went to Central America to buy land to grow their own bananas. Uh, and take advantage of the resources and cheap labor. And they sought broader control of these nations' infrastructure. So what that looks like is um, the ruler of uh, Guatemala at the time made business deals with United Fruit, giving them land um, and uh, allowing, giving them tax cuts. Um, now in 1944, there was a coup um, and this allowed for the country of Guatemala's first ever democratic election. Um, Jacobo Arbenz, uh, the new president of Guatemala, led reforms that brought stability to Guatemala. Um, but one of the things uh, he tried to do during his presidency was redistribute the land that belonged to uh, United Food Company at the time. Now, um, this is a problem for United Food Company. Uh, these land reforms were really bad for business. As you can see here, uh, United Fruit Company owned 42% of the land in Guatemala, um, the country. The entire country of Guatemala, 42% of that belonged to an American company, the United Fruit Company. And 72% of the arable land belonged to um, Guatemala. Now, um, with uh, Guatemala here, the reason this is such an issue is because uh, Jacobo Arbenz uh, wanted to buy back the land from the United Fruit Company um, using how they evaluated this land on their taxes. Now, United Fruit Company undervalued the land on their tax reports to uh, cheat the system and make more money. So that means they were buying back the land from United Fruit Company for very cheap and redistributing that land to poor, uh, Guatemalan farmers. Now, who here is a red-blooded American? <laughs> All of us? Most, most of us. Um, now, you're about to meet the most red-blooded American who may have ever existed. That would be uh, Dwight Eisenhower. Now, you may know Dwight Eisenhower. Uh, he fought the Nazis in World War II. He was the, uh, the general. Um, and he was the president uh, during the 1960s, uh, the 1950s. Um, now, United Fruit Company didn't like what was going on in Guatemala with our events, so they went to Eisenhower. Uh, and they convinced Eisenhower um, eventually that our events was a communist. Um, now, at the time, um, things like land reforms and minimum wage and uh, human rights were considered uh, communist, um, rather anti capitalist. Um, so it wasn't very hard to convince Eisenhower that uh, Arbenz, although he was democratically elected, was some sort of socialist. Um, and Eisenhower, um, his secretary of state at the time was actually the uh, head lawyer for United Fruit Company. Um, so, yeah. Um, so Eisenhower used the CIA um, to overthrow the government of Guatemala. Uh, they led a coup in the 50s and they killed the president of Guatemala and installed a U.S. backed dictator. Uh, you're looking here at Operation PV Success. So, U.S. backed rebels uh, quickly overthrew the government and the army. They installed a U.S. backed dictator, and the new government returned to granting excessive and complete power to the United Fruit Companies, um, or the United Fruit Company and other companies at the time. Uh, now, that is really bad if you're a Guatemalan. 
um, but really good if you're in the top 5% of people in Guatemala or uh, you hold some sort of direct share in the company. Now, if you're some sort of poor farmer that is working on these lands, obviously it is a horrific life to live. And you can see here are other nations which are considered banana republics or were considered you know, banana republics at some point. Uh, we got Bangladesh, Botswana, Costa Rica. Honduras is another big one where uh, the U.S. overthrew uh, their government and installed a U.S. Uh, back dictator to uh, hand reforms to these companies. Um, and now, where is the United Fruit Company now? Uh, Chiquita Banana. <laughs> uh, you know them, you love them. They're still around. And they uh, actually, Dole is another one, uh, a similar company that did similar things during the 60s. And you may be asking, what are they up to these days? Um, ex being extradited to Colombia for paying uh, terrorist groups. Um, to kill trade union members, uh, that was in 2006. Um, so they were actually um, funneling illegal funds in AK-47s to this paramilitary group right here, uh, the AUC, uh, to keep control of their banana plantations. And that, again, was in 2006. Um, thank you.